This has been my boy for over four years. I've loved this mouse, and in return, it's loved me. But it's starting to struggle. It's time to find a new one. Oh my gosh. That, that actually hurt a little bit. <laughs> you think it's okay? I'm sorry. It's fine. But how do you replace the most popular gaming mouse ever made? The G502 is a gaming staple. With its superior ergonomic shape, a handful of extra buttons tastefully added so that they don't get in the way. And of course, the infinity scroll. It's still going. Look at that, that was like 15 seconds. But it's old and there are better mice out there. I mean, this thing's still got micro USB on there. Can you see that? So I picked up four alternatives and I had two rules. First rule, they have to have more than just the two side buttons. I'm a bit into battle royales and having side buttons for things like throwables, heels, inventory, the G502 has spoiled me. Also, it has to be wireless. It's really hard to go back to wired after being wireless for four years. So I took these four mice, I played with each of them for a couple days, long enough to know what I liked and what I disliked about them. And it turns out I liked all four of them. So I'm very excited to share with you my findings, but I did have to choose one at the end. Streamers, uh, Owned.TV just released a massive update called Owned Pro with a bunch of free new features to make your streams pop. Like, let's say you found a stream design you really like, but it just doesn't fit your color scheme. Like this one here, this classic alpha gaming stream design, whoever that guy is, but you're more of a red streamer. Well, now it's red and you now have a unique stream design that no one else has. Also, favorite quality of life update of mine? When you're using their scene builder tool, you can just add it into OBS like a regular browser source. But what if your camera needs to be in front of the overlay but behind the camera border? What do you do then? Well, the big brains at own.pro gave you a little treat. They gave you two different links for your foreground and your background. I'm actually surprised this is the first time anyone's done that. That is a great feature. They also made it super easy, especially for new streamers to set up entire streams using their template format. And then they added a simple browse tool on top of that so you can mix and match and add anything that you want. Some really cool tools over there. So if you've been looking to spice some things up or you've been looking to get started and you don't know where to go, go to own.pro, link in the description down below. You can probably guess what the first mouse I picked up was. I bought the G502X. I mean, this thing has been a classic now for years. I wanted to see if they ruined it with the new version. Turns out it's everything I loved about the original G502, except better in every way. <laughs> I mean, the mouse is 11 grams lighter at 102 grams instead of 113 with the previous version, which is still on the heavy side for today's standards, but the 10% drop in weight was noticeable. Everything about this new version just feels refined. The smooth matte shell feels super premium. I love the rubber side grip, but I love that it's a different pattern so it doesn't get grimy like the last one. The feet on the bottom also feel a lot smoother, which makes that 11 gram weight loss feel like even more. Like I know this is still an above 100 gram mouse, but it doesn't feel like a heavy mouse. The infinity scroll wheel is even still there, but this time it's much more solidly held in the mouse. No more of this rattling which I think also makes this mouse feel lighter because you don't have that shift in weight every time you try to flick something quickly. I also really like the new RGB. The super diffused look is great, but more than anything, I just love the button layout of this mouse. But it's also got that extra thumb button, which has been upgraded. Not only can you switch the button around if you want different thumb positions, but you can even put a blank piece in there if you wanna remove it altogether. Then you have the two DPI shift buttons, which are programmable. I always set this front one to be like a, a ping button when I'm gaming, and the scroll wheel also clicks right and left for even more customization. Something that's becoming a standard feature on these bonus button mice is the use of a shift button. Like I set this front button to be the G shift button, which means every other button on here now has a second function. I think it's awesome for programming moves that you don't do very often, but they're kind of cumbersome to do on a keyboard. Like while I'm playing PUBG, I set the four different car positions to be hold the shift button and either left click, right click, click the scroll wheel left or scroll wheel right. Normally those buttons are control one, two, three, and four, which I will never be able to do quickly, especially while I'm also trying to hit the WASD buttons. It's not gonna happen. Honestly, the biggest gripe with this mouse is something that you've heard me complain about a lot on this channel, G-Hub. G-Hub takes the simplest things and makes them so unnecessarily complicated. Let me just give you a good example. When you're trying to assign your mouse buttons, you can't just click on the buttons and then press the keyboard button because that would be way too simple. You have to go to the search bar, type in the keyboard button, then drag the search result onto the mouse button you want to assign. Why? 
Why is it like that? Combine that with the fact that you can't adjust onboard profiles. You have to switch the mouse back to software control mode to adjust them and then switch to onboard mode again after you're done. And the whole time, the software keeps automatically switching profiles on you. Like what is happening over there? I'm just trying to assign buttons. This should be easy. Lucky for me and lucky for you, my friend showed me this kind of hidden Logitech software that is solely made for programming your onboard profiles. Thank the cauldron. Set your mouse into onboard storage mode in G-Hub and then never open G-Hub ever again. I will link to that software down below for you, by the way. This is a great mouse. It's normally a little bit pricey at $160, but you can get it on Amazon right now, at least as I'm filming this, for less than $140. Or if you get the non-RGB version, you can get it for less than $125. So I will link to both of those down in the description below. I'm also gonna put links down below for the new Senpai merch. We are out of stock on the embroidered Senpai hoodies, but we do have the Notice Me Senpai hoodie, the Vitruvian Waifu Crew, and and of course, we got the idiot beanie and the genius beanie. So check out senpai.tv. Next mouse. I thought I'd try a name that's relatively newer. Not brand new, but like, you know, it's not Logitech or Razer. And a lot of people talk about this company. I'd heard a lot about the Glorious Model O, but it turns out they have a Glorious Model I that is their extra side button version of the Model O. In fact, this is the Mark II. This is the first super light mouse I'd ever used at 74 grams. And if you've never used a super light mouse before, that is a wild experience. This is a totally different take on extra button mice. First off, it has three inline side buttons along with the front thumb button, and it comes with swappable button caps for different hand and grip styles. A lot of different hands out there. You have three different shaped front buttons, two different rear buttons, and then blanks for both of them that don't click in case you don't want extra buttons. I thought this was really cool, and it gave me something to play around with for a couple days until I found the combination that was like perfect for my grip style. This is fun. Why is that so satisfying? Oh, don't do that. Why is it so satisfying? Anyway, I think this mouse is great for gamers that just need a couple extra buttons. Like it doesn't have the two extra buttons next to the left click and the scroll wheel can't tilt left and right, but you do have two extra thumb buttons. Plus you have that shift mode, a lot like Logitech G shift. They call it layer shift, but works the same way. While I was testing this mouse, I would jump back and forth between it and the G502X a lot because I fell in love with the crazy lightweight but I wasn't crazy about the extra rear thumb button. It makes it really hard to do like that rolling thumb move to hit the two buttons, because every time I try to hit the middle one, I end up just mushing the, the rear one also. But one thing that this mouse, as well as most wireless mice are missing, is any kind of wireless dockable charging, which I think should be a standard for wireless mice. Not only do I forget to plug in my mouse a lot, but that also means that I have to have a loose cable on my desk all the time. And so this thing is inevitably going to die, which it did while I was testing it, and then you have to plug it in and you have a wired mouse again. And that's not why I bought a wireless mouse. A magnetic charging dock is an easy place to remember to put your mouse when you're done using it. And usually has a couple extra USB ports on the back so you can plug in the USB, like the wireless receiver into the back, which is really close to your mouse for great wireless transmissions. I learned a lot about myself shooting this video. Turns out I'm a feature guy. Like, give me that quality of life. I will gladly add a couple grams to my mouse if it means I can wirelessly dock my mouse on a charger any day. But maybe that's not you. That 74 grams is nice though. I did find myself gravitating towards this mouse a lot during the testing and it was the cheapest at only hundred bucks. There was one other mouse with the exact same weight at 74 grams. It is the SteelSeries Aerox 5. And this is a very interesting mouse. SteelSeries tried a couple new things with this. And I think with a couple tweaks, this could be my favorite mouse. This one is very similar to the Glorious Model I. Super lightweight with the cutouts around the shell, no tilting scroll wheel, only a few extra buttons. It's got that same front thumb button, but instead of a third inline button on the side, they added a rocker switch up top, which I thought was really cool. You can click this button up or down for two more assignable keys, and this way the two main thumb buttons can stay the same size. I had some issues with the rocker switch though, and I'll get to that in a second, but I first wanna say that I think the most satisfying clicks on any of these mice are actually from these two, the Glorious and the Steel Series. I mean, you can just hear a difference between the Steel Series and the G502. Something about these feels more mechanical, where these feel more, more clicky and I like this. It's a weird thing to put in a review though, because I don't know if one is actually better than the other, and they both work fine when you're gaming, but uh, there's something about a satisfying click. I just have to tell you, you, ha you had to know. Back to the rocker switch on this thing. The rotation orientation of this thing is, is a little weird. It's not like directly up and down. It's kind of on a slant, which means while clicking it up is a teeny tiny movement, pushing it down, you have to hit it at a weird angle, which means you have to move your thumb all the way to the top of it, otherwise you have to push really, really hard. Are you hearing clicks while I'm talking? Should I stop clicking while I'm talking? 
I'm gonna stop clicking while I'm talking. <laughs> I just found myself trying to use the down click and being late on every click because of how hard I had to push unless I moved my thumb far enough. It also felt like the rocker switch was a little bit too close to the two thumb buttons. A couple times I'd be just trying to press the two side buttons and I'd kind of fat finger and accidentally press the rocker switch up and activate whatever that hockey was. This could all be very easily fixed just by putting like a little gap between those two, but then also angling the rocker switch to be more vertical. And I know this is subjective and I feel kind of bad for giving this mouse the hardest time, but I'm not crazy about where the front button is. It's so much further forward than any other mouse on this list that I felt like the only way for me to even reach it was to move my entire hand. Like I think this mouse is specifically designed for claw grip users. A buddy of mine actually plays with this mouse and plays claw style and he loves this thing. So just Take that with a grain of salt. This one normally MSRPs for 140, but right now on Amazon it's 110, and I actually got it for less than $99 when I bought this thing, so. Sucks to be you. Any guesses for the last mouse that I tried for this video? I'll let you think about it for a second. And while you're thinking about it, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, because I'd really, I'd really love to see your face back here, if I'm being totally honest with you. And it helps out a bunch. It is the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro, or basically, the G502. <laughs> Just look at this thing. It's the same mouse. Jokes aside though, it's a good mouse and has a lot of what I really like. It's got good ergonomics, good button placement, even a couple cool features that Logitech doesn't have. Like, did you know that you can connect more than one Razer device to one dongle? Dongle? Receiver? <laughs> It's a dongle. You can connect more than one device, like a mouse and a keyboard, to the same dongle. That is really cool if you're a laptop user and you're really limited on USB ports. You can also switch back and forth between the 2.4 gigahertz dongle and Bluetooth if you're going back and forth between two different computers, which actually all of these mice could do, except for the Logitech for some reason. I thought that was weird. Also, if you have Razer Synapse set up to automatically switch between mouse profiles, depending on which game you're playing, whenever it switches profiles, it gives you a little notification in the corner letting you know what it's switching to. It's a nice touch, I appreciated that. It's got a tilting scroll wheel, which also has RGB on it. And I'm gonna be honest, this is some classy RGB. The, the scroll wheel plus the underglow, it's a nice combo. It's also the other mouse on this list that can be charged with a wireless dock, but I got my wireless dock for the Logitech G502X for 30 bucks. The one with this thing is $70. Like if you buy this mouse with a combo for the dock, it's 220 bucks. Feels a bit steep. And even without the dock, it's the most expensive mouse on this list for 150 bucks. And it's the heaviest mouse, 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 heaviest mouse on this list. 114 grams. Oh no, 115 grams, whew, it's off by one. That was a close one. But it seems like that would be a similar weight to the G502X, they're only what, like 13 grams off? But somehow while playing, that 13 grams was a very noticeable difference. Like it was very obvious to me this was the heaviest mouse. And with it being so similar to the G502, especially the original G502, I have kind of a hard time recommending this mouse unless you're like a Razer diehard fan. And you know what, if that's the case, if you are a Razer diehard fan, it's a great mouse. But the G502X was slightly better than the Razer in every single category, and it was a little bit cheaper. Look, they even copied the original rattly scroll wheel from the G502. Maybe that's why it feels so much heavier. <laughs> so after a couple weeks of testing these mice, the only conclusion I came to is that there's no perfect mouse. I love the weight and the button clicks of the Steel Series. I love the shape of the glorious Model I. I loved the features and the button layout of the G502X. So the perfect mouse doesn't exist. But in the end, your boy chose the Logitech, the G502X. I just can't quit you. Just no matter how much I loved that 74 grams, the super light mouse, I couldn't give up the button placement, I couldn't give up the charging dock. I kinda wanna try ripping this thing apart, like modding this thing and see how lightweight I can make this. Like throw maybe a smaller battery in this. This thing lasts months. I don't need it to last months. I can dock it every day. Anyway, do you have another favorite mouse that maybe I should try out? Just leave a comment down below, let me know. And if you don't have one, uh, just leave your favorite emoji for engagement, because you know, that helps out the channel a lot. Love you guys, hope you found this interesting and helpful, and as always, happy streaming. <laughs>